Hello, my name is Chris Moore and I'm an emergency physician at Yale New Haven Hospital and a clinical researcher at the Yale University School of Medicine. I wanted to speak briefly about our recent publication in the British Medical Journal, Derivation and Validation of a Clinical Prediction Rule for Uncomplicated Ureteral Stone, the Stone Score. I would first like to acknowledge uh, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality for funding this work as part of our overall project, Identifying Unnecessary Irradiation of Patients with Suspected Renal Colic. I would also like to thank my co-authors and other members of our research group for all their work. Uh, this was definitely a team effort. There are over 2 million emergency department visits annually in the United States for flank or kidney pain that is concerning for possible renal colic caused by a ureteral stone. Of those diagnosed with urolithiasis or kidney stone, it is estimated that more than 70% of these people in the U.S. now receive a CT scan. Non-contrast or unenhanced CT scan is very accurate for diagnosis both of kidney stone and conditions that may mimic a kidney stone. However, in addition to cost and resource utilization, CT scanning involves ionizing radiation, which may cause malignancy at a later time. The actual risk from CT radiation is controversial and varies in any individual, uh, but on a population basis, it is estimated we could expect an additional cancer for every 1,000 CTs of the abdomen and pelvis that we do, or about 1,000 additional malignancies for every year we do a million renal colic CTs at current dosing levels. Unfortunately, the risk from CT does not appear to be balanced by an improvement in patient-centered outcomes. Despite huge increases in the rate of CT scanning, the rates of diagnosis, procedures for kidney stones, and admissions have remained unchanged. With this project, we set out to derive and validate a clinical prediction rule that might be used to help objectively select patients for the most appropriate imaging, from no CT at all to a CT using a reduced dose to a standard CT dose um, if that's indicated. Our project involved two phases, a retrospective derivation phase and a prospective validation phase. For the derivation phase, we randomly selected more than 1,000 patient visits in which a CT was done for renal colic at our institution from 2005 to 2010. We abstracted more than 100 a priori factors from the medical record, and these factors were abstracted blinded to the CT findings, which were determined separately from the dictated CT report. We then conducted both univariate and multivariate logistic regression to determine the top factors associated with ureteral stone. The five most important factors that emerged on multivariate logistic regression were male gender, acute onset of pain, Caucasian race, presence of nausea or vomiting, and blood present on urine dipstick analysis. Using methodology from the Framingham study, the coefficients from the multivariate logistic regression score were used to assign integral points to a simplified scoring system, which allows the stone score to be more easily calculated with minimal loss of accuracy compared to the exact coefficients. Although you could use the exact coefficients uh, if you're using the score with a computer or uh, application. For the validation phase, we prospectively enrolled 491 subjects from May 2011 to February 2013 who underwent CT for renal colic and met inclusion criteria for an uncomplicated ureteral stone. The elements of the stone score, which are sex or gender, timing, acute onset of pain, origin or race, nausea or vomiting present, and lastly E for erythrocytes in the urine, were collected prospectively, again blinded to CT results. In order to compare the derivation and validation sets, we used risk strata for the stone score, 0 to 5 being low, 6 to 9 moderate, and 10 to 13 high risk for ureteral stone. These risk strata were highly correlated with risk of ureteral stone, with low risk having ureteral stone about 10% of the time, moderate risk about 50%, and high risk about 90%. These were very close in the derivation and validation sets as shown in the figure. Importantly, the likelihood of ureteral stone was inversely correlated with the likelihood of an acutely important alternate finding. Of those patients with a high stone score, an acutely important alternate cause was found at 0.3% of the derivation group and 1.6% of the validation group, respectively, compared to 2.9 and 3.7% of the overall derivation and validation groups. This suggests that the stone score can be used objectively to determine uh, patients that are likely to have ureteral stone and unlikely to have another concerning cause of symptoms. Because more than 80% of kidney stones will pass with symptomatic treatment, it may be reasonable to forego a CT entirely on patients with a high stone score, or if a CT is done, to use a very reduced dose, which has been shown to be accurate for determining stone size and location. The study is limited by being done at a single center and multi-center validation is warranted. It is also likely that point-of-care ultrasound could enhance the accuracy of the rule, something we are currently investigating. 
Our hope, though, is that the Stone score can be used to safely and appropriately determine if further imaging is needed at all, and if so, what, what type of imaging would be best uh, to safely improve the care of patients with suspected kidney stone. Thank you for taking the time to hear about our work, and please feel free to contact me, chris.moore at yale.edu, if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.